today's news, Demoy Hodge drops 22 in the Lakers' loss against the Boston Celtics. Six new principals appointed to serve. Groundbreaking ceremony for the West End Terminal likely in 2023. Haycrafts pledges support to HLSCC. And Market Square booths rented or reserved. But these stories with 2 it 4 News return. Ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new, fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Welcome, viewers, to the Thursday, July 13th edition of Twit for News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. Leading today's news, Demoy Hodge continues to show improvements in his new NBA journey dropping a season-high 22 points in his latest game for the Los Angeles Lakers on Wednesday night in the NBA 2K24 Summer League. Playing at the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas, Hodge ended the game after approximately 30 minutes on the court, converting 50% from the field and 46.2% from the three-point range as his Lakers fell to the Boston Celtics 95-90 in their first loss of the tournament. In addition to his 22 points, Hodge collected four rebounds and one assist. The Lakers raced to a 28-19 lead in the first quarter and increased it to 10 going into the second half. However, the Celtics responded with a 30-17 third quarter and closed the game out with a 22-20 score in the fourth quarter. Apart from Demoy's solid performance, his teammate Max Christie was the best player for the Lakers with 24 points and 8 rebounds, while Jalen hood Shafrino tallied 15 points, 4 rebounds and 3 assists. For the Celtics, Jordan Walsh led the way with 25 points and 8 rebounds, while J.D. Davison had a double-double with 11 points and 11 rebounds, in addition to his 6 assists, 2 steals and 2 blocks. The Lakers' next game will be against the Memphis Grizzlies on Friday, July 14th. The Virgin Islands education system has announced the appointment of six new principals, marking a step towards strengthening the leadership and improving the quality of education in the territory. With Deputy Chief Education Officer Mrs. Arlandette Crabb expressed her pleasure in welcoming the new principals and highlighted the Ministry of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports ongoing efforts to enhance education standards. Mrs. Crabb emphasized that the Ministry's primary objective is to continually improve the quality of education provided to students and that the appointment of the six new principals reflects their commitment to achieving this goal. Each principal brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to their respective schools and their appointments align with the Ministry's vision for educational advancement in the Virgin Islands. The newly appointed principals are as follows. Ms. Natasha Marshall, Brigada Flats Education Center Secondary. Ms. Ashkisha Maduro, Ebenezer Thomas Primary School. Ms. Janelle Reimer, Leonora Delville Primary School. Ms. Magdale Magdalene Alistair, Easling Henry Riches Learning Center. Ms. Akima Powell, Robinson O'Neill Memorial Primary School, and Mrs. Candace Bolondia Freites, Assistant Principal at Enos Adams Primary School. And Mrs. Crabb congratulated the appointees and expressed gratitude to all who applied for the positions, encouraging the new principals to pursue their passion for education and apply innovative ideas. Mrs. Scrabb emphasized the importance of their contributions in raising the bar and fostering transformation within the education sector. Work to the West End Ferry Terminal project could likely commence before the end of 2023. But this is according to the Junior Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries and First District Representative, Dr. The Honorable Carl Dawson. But during a recent interview on local radio station or radio show talking points Dr. Dawson revealed that a groundbreaking for the project is likely to occur in the final quarter of 2023 or early 2024. Well, I, I, on, on a question of short term, that really the, the, the timeline for um, beginning the actual project right. is, is fairly short. You okay. know, that, that really we could actually see 
um, groundbreaking in this year. Oh, you know, right. In the last right. quarter, certainly by the first quarter of next year, but quite possibly in the last quarter of this year. Yeah. And, and so, you know, to, to try and do something other than, you know, a little sprucing up here and there right. would not be, you know, make good sense of, a uh, good use of, of dollars if yes. it costs too much. You Dr. Dawson said the current temporary ferry terminal is not to the level that the BVI would have known prior to the previous permanent structure being destroyed in 2020 in 2017. Well, he said it doesn't provide travelers with the convenience and ease when utilizing the service from the West. We know that we have ferry services going on right now at West End, mm. but it's still not to the level that we have known. Sure. And um, not just for the benefit of the business persons in the first district but the convenience of the traveling public right because quite a, a number of um, persons who would travel to the virgin islands would come to west end and leave from west end mm. so it was clearly a um a, a an important port of entry and um the government has um advanced plans as far as um rebuilding the the um west end ferry terminal are we Dawson also expressed the design of the new terminal, stating that it is being finalized following feedback received from the public. <laughs> I, I don't have an image in front of me, but um, I think the one that you're calling the odious building relates to the three plans that were um, circulated and um, the public had an opportunity to, to weigh in mm -hmm. on which one they would like. Um, and I, I thought that was a, a good initiative, mm. I mean, in terms of having some participation in the choice. Um, the, the odious one, <laughs> as, as uh, Mr. Grinch <laughs> placed it, I think that they have, the last plans I saw, there, there have been some, some modifications okay. to that, that I think um, combine some of the other things, but I think at the end of the day, uh, results in a more inviting looking okay. building. Okay. In, in my opinion, okay. you know, perhaps the one that you, you know, there are persons who liked it the way it was. But As it relates to his main concern of the project, Dr. Dawson said it is the functionality of the completed facility as it needs to reflect the quality of stay in the territory for visitors. That as far as that building is concerned, yes, I think it has to, to, to look right. Mm -hmm. But my main concern was functionality. Right. How, how can it serve the purpose? It was an opportunity for the government of the Virgin Islands to build something first class. When you look at, at the tourists that we have coming here, mm -hmm. we have persons who are coming and who are paying quite a nifty dollar to stay in villas, hotels, and yachts. And, and really what we have, whether at certainly at West End or currently in Road Town, is not reflective of the quality of stay that they will likely have here in the Virgin Islands. So it, it presented an opportunity, the ferry, West End Ferry Terminal, to do something of a particular standard mm -hmm. that, um, that starts off a vacation right. So obviously, of course, it, it's going to start with the physical facility, but the services, the, 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 the level of um, circulation, the ease of facilitating the movement right. of persons and and luggage and so on mm -hmm. will be will be important to determine whether or not it's it's um it's a successful building right. but but it, it it's an opportunity that we won't have again anytime soon i don't i don't think they're going to rebuild road town right away right. you know so yeah. this is the opportunity and we have to make the most of it yeah. up next Haycrafts pledges support to hlscc and market square booths rented or reserved well these are more stories afterward from our sponsors Father Jesus, that learn you along like church souls. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, protect you. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? 
Uh, talk about Pola. Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top up or what? Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I host. I watch him bar. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon. Paw Patrol, I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome back, viewers. At least 12 students from the H. Lavity Stout Community College's Marine Professional Training Program stand to benefit from a monetary gift which was pledged by the family of the late Peter Haycraft to fund paid apprenticeships. Well, this was confirmed by the HLSCC in a media release on Wednesday, which said a contribution by the family is a means to honor the legacy of Mr. Haycraft. The college said the funds from the family will go towards students who are enrolled in the MPT program in the first instance. Well, it said, and I quote, Each cohort consists of 12 students who will complete 10 consecutive weeks of full-time and focused workshop across six certification modules and eight consecutive weeks of apprenticeship where well, this donation was further enhanced by several small donations made by the apprenticeship course for MPT's cohort number five. In addition to the family's contribution to the MPT program, they also collaborated with the Nani Key to donate three 40 feet containers that are presently located at the college's south campus. Well, this donation is aimed at supporting continued instruction of fire prevention and basic firefighting, which is a module pre presently taught as part of the college's standards of training, certification, and watchkeeping of seafarers course. Commenting on what the contribution means to the HLSCC was President Dr. Richard Georges, who expressed gratitude to the family. Well, he said, and I quote, I am delighted that the Haycraft family has chosen to support our marine and maritime uh, programs in honor of Mr. Peter Haycraft. Mr. Haycraft has an enduring philanthropic uh, legacy in the territory, and these gifts to the college ensure that a generation of Virgin Islanders will benefit from the spirit of generosity." End quote. But the family, in a brief statement, explained why they decided to fund the MPT program. What well, they said, and I quote, we are supporting this program to ensure its continuity as we believe in its importance in the future of the British Virgin Islands, end quote. The residents are in interested in learning more about the marine and maritime programs at the college can contact the HLSCC Director of Marine and Maritime Studies, Ms. Susan Zuluski at uh, szuluski at hlscc.edu.vg and the HLSCC Director of Institutional Advancement, Ms. Yvonne Crab at ycrab at hlscc.edu.vg, respectively. The Road Town Market Square project is under scrutiny as concerns arise about the lack of activity and utilization of the newly renovated space. But during a recent appearance on the Talking Points talk show, Junior Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, Dr. The Honorable Carl Dawson, faced questions regarding the current state of the Rotong Market Square, where the hosts of the program expressed their disappointment in the fact that despite the $1.7 million investment in the project, the chaos at the square remained unoccupied. We, we've just done, spent $1.4 million, I think was the last count, for a market in town. Mm -hmm. it, it's not utilized. I mean, you go down any given day and there's no produce being sold there. The vendors that used to be in that area, they relocated to the, to the, to the new area, and they've stayed there. Yeah. Have there been discussions with those persons to either to get them 
to utilize the market or new persons to utilize it? And h how do we bring that together so that we, we, we get some vibrancy well, in, in this? Where they are now is free. Well, you made an excellent point that where they are now is free. But um, at the same time, too, um, you know, we did have an intention. I mean, when it was built, mm. there was an intention. Dawson went on to reveal that, to his knowledge, all of the chaos at the square are currently leased, although they may appear unused. Figure out, because as it is, as I understand it, that actually the, all the boots there yeah. are rented. Don't mind you see some of them um, not, occupied. not occupied, they're rented. The revelation raised concerns about why individuals would hold on to the spaces without utilizing them and whether they are fully are fulfilling their lease agreement by paying for the reserved spaces. So, and you, whether but, or not you're paying the rent, but if you if you just take it to, to hold on to it, then it needs to be taken back. Um, there's no. It's it's supposed to be for business and for and yeah. to help well, agriculture to grow. Dawson expressed that at the time it may not be appropriate to reclaim the chaos from their leasers. But this, as it is noted, the possibility that individuals may need some time to develop their ideas and get their businesses up and running. Yeah, I would say, I would say, I would agree with that. I would say whether or not we've hit that time point to, mm -hmm. to say that that's the time to take it back. Mm -hmm. Because at the time it would have been built, somebody may be planning a business and mm -hmm. say, you know what, rather than wait, I need to put up my money, even though I know I'm not right. going to be ready for six months. Right. I need to secure this, secure this you know, point. so I don't think right. we've, we've reached that point. But, but in terms of the general point of, of what we envisage the market to be, mm. that place where, you know, fruit, fish, and so on could be bought and sold, right. um, we, we still have to do whatever we have to do One to ensure that, that that's what we end up with. In addition to the issue of unused chaos, the topic of parking was also raised during the discussion. But the host of the program highlighted the potential inconvenience for vendors if the location of the market square is not easily accessible. You mm -hmm. cannot have a market mm -hmm. where you expect people to go and patronize mm -hmm. without adequate parking, mm -hmm. and for that, the vendors are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're going to take it seriously. That's mm -hmm. something we need to look at as a matter of priority. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is, but I know I've heard that as one of the issues that they're mm -hmm. seeking to address. And, and With the Emancipation Festival approaching, the host suggested the integration of the market square for vending during the peak of events, which would or uh, could attract more visitors and increase the utilization of the space. And, and, and also, Honorable Dawson, you know, we've got the August Emancipation coming up, mm -hmm. and there's going to be all sorts of wholesale vending going on. Mm -hmm. Given that we've got this wonderful set of kiosks that are unoccupied or paid for, mm -hmm. shouldn't there be some sort of campaign to move people to maybe there as a first instance rather than alongside the road where the parking problems are exacerbated because you stop around, alongside mm -hmm. the road to pick mm -hmm. up some mangoes mm -hmm. or what? Mm -hmm. So we, we've got to get Road Town and, and, and this whole coordinated approach coordinated. Yeah, it's it's still very haphazard at the moment. It would seem. Yeah, as I said though, some of the even the vacant ones are yeah, on the are, lease. Are on the lease. So, <laughs> so it's not as if though we can just simply um, send persons to them. But uh, the leaseholders to occupy yeah. them. Up next, Trinidad and Tobago confirms two cases of monkeypox and Kenyan priests charged in Jamaica. With these and more stories, let's wait for news return. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Father Jesus. 
15, 20, 25, 30, you want top of power. Eh? Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Trinidad and Tobago has confirmed two cases of the monkeypox virus, according to health authorities there, where the first patient is a middle-aged man with a history of international travel, while the second is a young male. The diagnosis was confirmed by the Caribbean Public Health Agency this week. While health authorities there have swiftly initiated a public health response, including contact tracing to prevent the potential spread of the virus. Monkeypox is primarily transmitted through close contact or respiratory droplets. Residents and visitors of Trinidad and Tobago are urged to remain vigilant and take necessary precautions to protect themselves and others from infection. For more in this report by TTT Live Online. Common signs and symptoms of monkeypox include skin rash or mucosal lesions lasting two to four weeks, accompanied by fever, headache, muscle aches, back pain, low energy, and swollen, swollen lymph nodes. Health authorities have advised individuals experiencing these symptoms to seek immediate medical attention at the nearest health facility. For our final story, in a disturbing turn of events, a 39-year-old Kenyan national and Roman Catholic priest, Lawrence Movenji, has been app apprehended by Jamaican authorities on charges of ab abduction and rape of a minor. According to the police, the alleged incidents occurred in Portmore in March, but were only reported last month. The 12-year-old victim positively identified the priest leading to the laying of several charges, including sexual assault. The police conducted an extensive investigation, and on Monday, the clergyman was questioned in the presence of his attorneys before the charges were filed. He was reportedly charged with having sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16, sexual touching, grievous sexual assault, and the abduction of a child under 16 years old. But the acts are said to have taken place on the premise of the church. But the Roman Catholic of Kingston has released a statement expressing its deep concern for all parties involved in this reported incident. While they have taken action by removing the priest from all active pastoral duties, it has also assured the public of its full cooperation with the relevant authorities. Of course, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. Father Jesus, that learning you along like church souls. Customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man can take care of me. How may I assist you? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with Hero Bundle.
bundles and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want Top Up or what? Yo, everything good, Dad? Why? This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church service. Hmm. Alright, do you enjoy the rest of the day? Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny boy, come yes. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top-Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want Top-Up or what? Eh? The wait is over! CCT Fire is here! Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new, fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fiber Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Father Jesus, that line you long like church service. Hmm. Customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Eh?